This foot was trimmed just about a month ago, I believe. And since I last trimmed him, he has shed all of the sole here. So he has really nice concavity. You can see the angle of the hoof pick. Um, his sole has really nice nat natural concavity. I didn't carve that out. He popped that out all on his own since the last time I trimmed him. And had I forced it to pop out when I trimmed him, he for sure would have been tender-footed probably for weeks, who knows. These horses, horses, any horse, are so, they have so much intelligence in their body because they know what they need and what they don't need. He knew when he no longer needed that sole for protection and he was ready to shed it. There's no way that I could have known that better than he knew that. So what I'm doing now is I'm just bringing back his toe. I'm redoing my bevel here, kind of doing this at an angle. I'm gonna come all the way around. He still, has a little bit of toe callus here, some extra sole there, and I'm not gonna take it out. It will pop out on its own. If I were to, to carve it out right now, again, he would probably be sore. And this is a horse that has never gotten sore from a trim. Well, from any of my trims on him, at least. So I'm actually just gonna do these heels with my rasp because there's not a lot to take off and I don't want to accidentally take too much on one side and make them uneven. So I'm gonna use my feet to stabilize my stand. Bring these quarters and heels down to match the toe. Open up the central sulcus. Check his balance again. Now I'm gonna smooth out this bevel where I didn't really do it on the quarters yet. You don't need as steep of a bevel on the quarters. You want the steepest part of the bevel to be at the toe. So again, I'm gonna come on this side. My rasp is a little bit dull. And I'm just gonna pull his foot forward from here. One factor that is so important in hoof health, and it's also a way that you as a horse owner can be more involved in your horse's hoof care without actually doing any trimming, and that is diet and nutrition. Your horse could be getting the perfect trim, but without proper diet and balanced vitamins and minerals, there will still be issues. If you have problems like cracks, flares, chips, crumbly hooves, these issues can be made worse by improper trimming for sure, but they are deeply rooted in diet. I just wrote a short book about this, and if you are interested in learning more about it, you can get a free copy by clicking the link in the description of this video. I do want to open this up a little bit. I'm using my bonsai nippers for this. You could use your regular nippers or your hoof knife as well. Just open up these collateral grooves so there's no flaps for manure or mud, anything that's left to get trapped under there. I don't wanna create any breeding grounds. And open up the central sulcus, just pop out this little piece. And as you can see, I found a little bit of gunkiness in there. I will put some stuff on there for thrush at the end of my trim. I'm just gonna clean that out. So that's a great example where the whole frog looked hard from the outside, but actually right underneath of it, there was a little pocket of gunk. So coming around at the toe here, Hooves are pretty hard, so I'm not gonna be moving my nipper over all the way. I'm just gonna be moving it halfway so it's easier for me to squeeze them shut and trim the hoof. So 
I'm going to come all the way around. I just find it's easiest to get started right where the hoof is curved. And so I'll come around all the way on this side. I'm going to just do that with my rasp again like I did on the other side. Now, coming here, just matching the other side. my stand stable here. I'm not really on level ground, so that's making it a little more difficult. There we go. Bevel these quarters and heels. Smoothing out my bevel around the toe. And I've come right back, right back to that white line. Now the white line is the kind of greenish cream colored line. The white line, the one that's the color white is the water line. That's totally fine to trim into. And then the blue gray is the outer hoof wall. Not much to do here. Just a once over. We'll look one more time. So again on this foot you can see he didn't grow that much hoof wall in a month he popped the sole if he hadn't popped sole it would have barely looked like he needed a trim at all but he popped all this sole now he needs a trim but again i'm not gonna pop this toe callus out and make him sore that would be a big mistake so i'm gonna see what's going on here a little higher on this heel and because of that little creek that's still in the pressure. Oh, there you see. So that came off really easily with my hand. Same rule with soles with frog. If you can't get it off with like your hoof pick or your hand, you better wait for the horse to let it go on his own. Or that's where you're gonna get into an issue of them being sore. Or even you might not notice that they're sore, they might seem fine but they're gonna switch from a heel first landing to a toe first landing, which is not mechanically proper and leads to a ton of other issues. So I'm gonna come in here where I can get easy access and I'm gonna bring this toe back. I'm just moving my nipper over a little bit. Even though there's that little bit of creek left down by where they live, it's just enough to put some gunk in their collateral grooves, not enough to soften up the hooves. A good tip is if you have irrigated pasture and you're going to trim, putting your horse out on irrigated pasture for a day or two will make a big difference. I'm always surprised at my clients who irrigate their pastures in the summer, how much easier their horse's hooves are to trim than say these horses that are just out um, on the hillside <laughs> that is not irrigated. So I'm coming around. Now I want to bring, if I brought though this quarter down to the hoof wall, to the, the new sole plane, it would be a huge um, low spot. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to take, follow the line I already made. So I'm taking some height off, but not all the way down. 
And I always like to do less than I know I need to take off the heels with my nipper because I find it's really hard to get a perfectly um, even and straight cut in the summer when the hooves are so hard. So I just take a little bit off to make it easier on myself and my rasp. And then I like to really, I like to really um, take it the rest of the way down and make sure it's completely even with my rasp. He doesn't really have any bar to trim except for right there, the top of the bar. Do the same thing on that side. Check where I'm at. Okay, I see him a little higher here on this side. And, all right, I'm gonna do most of the rest of this with my rasp here smoothing out that very rough bevel I did with my nippers. The harder the hooves, usually the rougher the nipper cut is, the more jagged and you have to do more smoothing. In the winter when the hooves are soft, it's a lot easier to make nice, smooth, clean nipper cuts. But, a little bit. Sometimes it's just one or two swipes you need to make it even. I want to make sure to really bevel these quarters to prevent them from chipping since the hoof wall does have that extra height. Here's not extra height, it's even, but the sole's gone here and not here and I don't want Belly scratches after getting the feet done. Oh.